So good morning everybody and our first recipe of our feel good food series is an absolute British classic. It's a Victoria sponge cake because as we all know um, a bit of tea and cake always makes you feel better. This is a great recipe for children to make if they're at home um, and a fabulous recipe to make and actually leave outside the door of somebody who might be in isolation. So a bit of kindness from this recipe too. Maria before we get going um, why is it called a Victoria sponge cake? Very good question, AJ. Well, apparently, Queen Victoria really used to enjoy a slice of sponge with her afternoon cup of tea every day. Oh, so it go. became known as the Victoria Sponge Cake. And it really is one that seems to sort of rally the sense of British spirit in times of adversity. Now, um, you need to line two tins. Now, I've got two 20 centimetre sandwich tins here. You can adapt the recipe if you've only got smaller tins or indeed larger tins, which I'll tell you about. A bit of grease proof or uh, baking parchment. Just draw around with a pencil. Um, just cut out that quite roughly um, because we just don't want that cake sticking. So we want to get your cutting and cutting and sticking as well. And then a little bit of oil. Uh, just line the tin or grease the tin with your fingers and pop in that piece of greaseproof paper in the bottom. Okay, now... So what else have we got over here then? Right, so the great thing about Victoria sponge is you only actually need four ingredients to make the cake itself. You need eggs and you need um, equal quantities of either butter or a soft margarine, caster sugar, the finer one, and regular self-raising flour. And we, when I was in the Tesco the other day, they'd uh, run out of eggs and flour. So we assume you've all got plenty of eggs and flour. Yeah, we're starting with this because the one thing I think most of the British population do have at the moment are eggs and flour. But don't worry, AJ, you're filming uh, another uh, supper recipe later on today. Yeah. So we'll, we'll aim to get out sort of baked cakes and sort of main meal ideas to you as quickly as possible. Now, thing to remember with Victoria Sponge is that per egg, you need 50 grams of fat, flour and sugar. So for a 20 centimetre cake tin, you need what we call a four egg mix. So that's four eggs and 200 grams of um, butter or margarine, 200 grams of caster sugar and 200 grams of self-raising flour. If you have got 16 to 18 centimetre tins, you need to bring that recipe down to what we call a three egg mix three eggs, 150, 150, 150. But the recipes are always on our um, page at the end of this video. So first thing to do um, is what we call cream the uh, butter and sugar together. Now I've got a mixture of, um, un of um, flora, which is a polyunsaturated um, sunflower margarine, and I've got some stalk blue band margarine in here. So you can mix and match. You can also use butter or you can use a mixture of all the fats. But the important thing to remember is this is not a recipe to use your low fat spreads, so your light margarines, because they won't work. And there's two stages to creaming. Um, firstly, it's important to say use a wooden spoon for creaming and you're using it using the back of the wooden spoon. The first step is to really um, sort of squish the two ingredients into one ingredient. Squish being a particularly technical term, AJ. Yeah, it sounds it. And then if you have a look at it now, it's quite a yellow and quite firm. I'm going to put a bit of elbow grease in here. So this is a bit of a kitchen workout as well to actually cream this to make it change in colour, change it in texture um, and go from being sort of yellow and quite solid to really pale and fluffy. So it is about just getting air in. Now you can use an electric hand whisk for this. Um, but I think we all need to be exercising as much as we can. I think we've all got lots of time on our hands as well. Yeah, so time and bad. energy and exercise. So this is a great one to get even little children in mixing um, and creaming. So if you see now, my mixture has gone much paler, much lighter and much fluffier. So I'm going to put that to one side. Now I'm going to crack my eggs. Um, so I've got four sort of medium to large eggs. Um, I'm actually at the moment thinking of getting some chickens, AJ. Why? Well, because I've got quite a big garden and actually chickens are really easy to look after, um, to look after well. Beautiful eggs and then at the end of the day, nice bit of chicken. Oh, there we go. So what can you say? Anyway, I've cracked my eggs 
and I'm just going to give those a little whisk up. I think I'll have to call one AJ. Oh, maybe, yeah. Don't know about that. The one is sort of the tidy and organised. Yeah, the grumpy one. Right, okay, so I'm going to add my eggs a little bit at a time. Now, it's important to do this gradually because what we're doing with the eggs is again incorporating air. Now, I've turned my wooden spoon over now, so I'm using the actual um, sort of bowl-shaped side and I'm beating more than creaming. So again, a good one, get those tunes on and actually get the air in by a really good mix. If it starts to curdle, so look a bit like... Um, baby sick. Baby sick, basically. That is, that is the best description of a curdled cake mixture. Just don't worry, okay? Some people say you can put a, a tablespoon of flour in, but really the curdling isn't gonna matter hugely. Mix, 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 there we go. Goodness, no bingo wings this summer, AJ. But we could do that as a recipe. So oh. bingo wings, oh. <laughs> or chicken wings maybe. But. Yeah, buffalo wings. And we have got loads of ideas. Stay so tuned. Recipes. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we really are committed to keeping the ideas out there to keeping um, all your youngsters amused and to keeping you all really well fed. So I've got some nice yellow yolks in these eggs. So if you do have chickens, you give them a little bit of a handful of corn every now and again, AJ. Oh really? That keeps the yolks. Do really they have nice corn in yolks. Tesco? <laughs> corn, not corn. Oh, oh right. Right, putting the rest of I've heard chickens are a real fan of corn. <laughs> Oh dear, what am I going to do with you? So we also just thought that the nation can't do without AJ's jokes for however many weeks it's going to be. So oh, they we'd, can. Uh, we'd bring them to you. So, there we go. I've got um, a really well incorporated mixture. I've got lots of air in from the creaming and lots of air from beating in the eggs. Now, this bit is important. Because what I want you to do is swap that big wooden spoon for a slim metal spoon because we've spent lots of effort and time getting air in and we want that spongy mixture so we want to be really careful that getting the flour in doesn't pop all those little bubbles. So I'm just going to grab a sieve and we're going to sieve in this self-raising flour. Now sieving is about getting lumps out but it's also about getting air in so we're going to sieve that all over the mixture, try and keep as much flour in the bowl as possible. I always find the kids manage to get more of the flour outside of the bowl. That is a little bit of a hazard. Yeah. Okay, so let's try and so be... always have some spare flour. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Now, what we're going to do is what we call folding in the flour. So you want to use the um, sharp edge of the spoon. You want to go down to the bottom. You want to turn over and turn the bowl 90 degrees at the same time. And this is all designed to keep as much of the air in the mixture as possible. Now, if you want a chocolate sponge, what you do is measure out your flour. Then you want to take out a heaped tablespoon of the flour and replace it with a heaped tablespoon of cocoa powder. So that's not drinking chocolate. It's the, you know, the, the real dark cocoa powder, like the Bourneville cocoa powder. Um, other brands are equally as good, I'm sure. Um, and also you need to put in a teaspoon of baking powder as well because the cocoa powder is heavy and you've also taken out a little bit of the raising agent in the self-raising flour. So that's your chocolate sponge, coffee, um, a good tablespoon of coffee essence, lemon, uh, zest of a lemon, orange, zest of an orange, um, almonds, some almond essence. So again, you can vary this hugely from one recipe. And there we go, I've got my cake mixture here. Now it needs to be what we call- Let's just get in there a dropping consistency, okay? So hold the spoon up and see whether it drops off without you having to shake it. If you stand there for two days waiting for it to drop, is that too long? That is actually too long. Yeah. That's actually quite a good point, AJ, because once you've combined the wet ingredients, so the egg with the dry, the flour, you've got to get it in the oven as quickly as possible. So what I should have said right at the beginning is 180 degrees. Gas so we have turned our oven on. We are ready. Uh, we are actually prepared. Now, if I was a purist, or if I was on Bake Off, I would weigh, or oh, if I was AJ, actually, yeah. I would weigh the amount of mixture going into my cake tins. I am a little bit more homely with my cooking. 
and I'm just going to uh, pop it in by eye really. Eddie, can you get me a spatula yes. please? I can come and say hello at the same time. <laughs> This is not all about me, AJ. It's about you. Yeah, as well. I'll do ones later, you know. Yeah, what are you doing later then, AJ? I'm doing chicken later in okay. a really nice tomato sauce, some fresh herbs, and some cannellini beans. Ooh. So hopefully, using lots of stuff that you've got in your cupboard. Yeah, it's, it's the tins of chickpeas and beans that we're going to be really glad we've got in there. Both sort of thing. Yeah. I, I love a beany sort of stew, to be honest, sort of a cassoulet type thing. Right, obviously it goes without saying keep your hands really, really well washed before you start cooking uh, because you are going to get your hands in there a little bit. And then using the back of that metal spoon, we're just going to spread it out. Try and take care not to get it up the side of the tin and try and do this quite definitely and swiftly so that again we're not um, popping all of those bubbles. So any questions at the moment, AJ? No, I'm pretty happy with this. You all right? Good, good, good. You, so you stop now. Just keep going. I'll skim past all this. I'm gonna get it in the oven now. Yeah, so what we'll do is I'll come round. Actually I'll stop there. Okay, so my oven is uh, on 180 degrees, uh, gas, uh, gas mark five. If you've got an arga, uh, four oven arga in the baking oven, the centre of it, if you've got a two oven arga, get the cold shelf and put that in the middle of the uh, hot oven and put the cakes down at the bottom. Excuse my very large... You don't need a comedy oven like this. <laughs> And whereabouts in the oven are you going to put it? So you do need to make sure that it's in the middle. Try yeah. and get both on the same shelf so that they cook evenly. And the biggest bit of advice is do not open your oven halfway through because the cold air going in will make it sink. So you need to really be putting your timer on for about 18 minutes and I'll show you how to check when it's cooked in about 18 minutes time. So see, see you soon. in a minute. So, cake's done and out the oven. So how do I know they're cooked? Well, they're golden, they're risen. Uh, coming away slightly from the side of the tin and if you press them, there's a slight bounce. This is not a cake to try by sticking a knife into the middle of. So, once they're cooled enough to handle, I'll put a knife in around the edge, um, pushing outwards, and then just flip the cake over. Obviously that works, doesn't it? There we go, onto our hand. Uh, peel off the backing paper. Look at that. And then we're just going to uh, fill it with, traditionally, with a raspberry jam, actually, not a strawberry jam. So, uh, in these kinds, whatever jam you've got will be great. So it doesn't matter if it's lemon curd, doesn't matter if it's raspberry, strawberry, plum, whatever. I think we can all agree we've all got way too much jam at home and we can get rid of it. Yeah, there's Christmas ones you have that sort of yeah. carry on for ages. My nana sort of brings me about six jars of jam every time she comes to visit, oh, so we love your I need nana. lots of jam-related recipes. We need to do your nana's mushroom volleyball. Oh, I'll get well. in touch with her, absolutely. So, uh, choose the worst one, the one that doesn't look quite as attractive, to go um, downwards, and then we're just gonna mix that jam up a little bit so that you can spread it properly. Um, obviously, I've got my mother's best um, cake stand out for this It's pretty one. retro, even for you, Marie. Yeah, I mean, quite cool. Um, and then spread just the edges. You want a little margin so that when we put the top on, it's not going to squirt out, but you do want to be able to see um, the filling. Okay, so this is not rocket science. Uh, nice, good mixture in there. You could put some cream in, you could put some buttercream, but traditionally, Victoria sponge will just have jam in the middle. And then over we go. Like that. And we're going to finish it again traditionally with some caster sugar not with some icing sugar. Now, if I was feeling a bit poorly or a bit sad because I was at home on my own, I'd be very happy to receive one of these on my doorstep. And just eat the whole thing in about 10 minutes. Yeah, probably, probably yeah, yeah. pyjamas and just eat the whole thing, to be honest. Um, so, AJ, I think there's only one thing left to do. Eat you, it. You need to come and try a bit. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You just okay. put, this, put this down. So, good old British spirit, keeping going with a nice bit of tea and cake. Now I've set the camera up for Maria's height, so I might cut my head off. Okay, so just, just see what life's like at my level, AJ. Yeah, ideal. So, imagine that you're Queen Victoria. Mm, maybe not. Good. All in my beard, I assume. Okay, so, recipe one, Victoria sponge cake. Get cracking. <laughs>